Welcome to the homework two solutions. And in this first question, we're going to go over how to reason about the state of a chart when parsing a token in a given grammar. So right here, I have a grammar that identifies JavaScript function calls. Let's say I have a function pow, which computes the power of a number to another number. It doesn't really matter. So the idea is that this function computes five to the six. But what we care about is the tokens right here. And to show that this string is in this grammar, we're going to walk through it. So here I've written our first starting rule, which goes to ID, some parentheses, and then optional arguments. So the ID in this case is pow, and then we have two parentheses. And the optional arguments, in the case of our example, is five and six. We don't have to have anything here. As the title implies, it's optional. It could go right to the empty string, but we do have arguments. In this case, we're going to have some kind of expression or an expression followed by a comma with more arguments. And in this case, we have two. So the optional arguments goes to arguments. It's not empty, so it's going to go to this role. And then from arguments, we're going to go to this role, where expression is going to be five. We have the comma that matches our comma. And the rest of the role is going to be args, which goes to, since this is our last argument, it's just going to go straight to expression, which is six. And we were able to match this string to the grammar using the set of replacement rules given. So I just went through that to demonstrate how this grammar matches JavaScript function calls. But that's not really what the question's asking. The question's asking about the chart. And we're going to see what happens when we parse a certain set of tokens. So instead of at writing the actual string, I just have the tokens that matter. And for the sake of parsing, that's all we care about. This can be matched by what I had before. But all we care about is the tokens. Now when we parse this, what we want to ask is what is in chart two, the third entry in our chart. And so we're given a set of rules that may be in the chart. And I'm just going to go through them real quick. So here's our choices. And we're trying to figure out, as a reminder, what's in the second entry in our chart when we parse this list of tokens in this grammar. And since we're asking a question, we should remember question marks. So there's really two ways to solve this. The first is you work out the chart by hand. And that's what we're going to do because it's easier to kind of explain what's going on. An alternative, which is equally valid, is to take the code that we wrote in lecture and modify it to print the chart at every given state. This is probably what you want to do if you were asked this question more than once. But like I said, for the sake of going over the answer, we're going to work it out by hand. OK, here's our input. Here's our grammar. And we want to know what's in chart 0. We haven't read anything in yet, so we're just going to be at the beginning of the start substitution rule. And we introduce this in chart state 0. So now we're in chart 1, and we've read in one token, ID. And we're just going to shift on this rule, because ID is the first token in this rule. And this comes from 0 as well. So now the moment of truth, chart 2. Let's see what we can do. So we're going to see the token. That's the left parenthesis. And we're going to shift. So here, there's two things that are possible. One is that optional arguments is empty. We don't know yet because we haven't seen the rest of the input token list. In that case, we're going to be past optional arguments. There's also the case where argu optional arguments isn't empty, which is actually what's going on with our input list. So let's write both those out. Here, we've moved past optional arguments, presumably because it's empty by this rule right here. Then we have the other choice where optional arguments is not empty, and we're going to be processing it. So regarding this first written out rule in our chart, we have the optional arguments being empty. So we need to make sure to add that. We introduce this in chart state 2. We have the other case where optional arguments is not empty, and we're going to go through args now. So I've written out both args rules, and since we haven't read in this next token, we don't have anything to go further on in either rule, so at the beginning of each rule. And presumably, the next chart state, we will shift over with the new regular, uh, with the new expression. So now we have everything we need to answer the question. We're just going to check off the choices that were in our chart state two.